Alan, I'm here with John Crowney. Today's date is January 4th, 2010. Okay. So, um, I just started with like some, you guys know like where you were born and everything. Okay. Do you remember what it was like when Hitler came to power? Like, did that have any effect on you, or were you like Hitler? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he was a bad man. You could see that for a long time. You know, but, uh, little did we know that he was going to cause all the trouble that <laughs> we got involved in, but. My part in it, I wasn't in that direction. Thank yeah, God. I was in the were Pacific. The Pacific. Did um, like, where well, where we went December on December seventh, nineteen forty-one. Do you remember? December nineteen forty-one. Uh, yes. I had to stop and think. <laughs> I was over in Vermont working in a, a defense factory, uh, but I was home that weekend uh, up in Lake George at Seventy Point, which is across the lake from the old landing. I was outside and uh, I don't know what I was doing, but anyway, I came in and uh, uh, my mother said that uh, on the radio that Pearl Harbor uh, had been attacked. I wasn't too sure where Pearl Harbor was. I almost tricked you into it too, didn't I? Worked with the map of the world in and located it. But I didn't uh, get involved in anything until uh, uh, October of uh, 43. Um, what did you do when you got involved in life? Well, I was drafted. And, uh, and then uh, a month later, I was inducted and uh, was uh, getting a date there. <laughs> this a long time ago. Conducted in uh, uh, October uh, '43, and uh, that's uh, we had to go to Rutland for a physical and uh, uh, some tests and, and 
but then I was actually drafted on the 15th of uh, November, and I was shipped off to uh, uh, well, Massachusetts. I'm looking for the. graduated and uh, were sent off to uh, another school. I went to El Paso, which is right on the border of uh, uh, Texas and, and Mexico, and uh, took more training as a uh, dental technician. And uh, we went uh, to uh, uh, another uh, army depot in California near uh, uh, the bay around San Francisco. You know, we were advancing towards going overseas. And uh, we were there a while and then they gave us a uh, couple of weeks vacation to go home and back again. And uh, then we were all on a ship and uh, uh, a large group of medics. And uh, we were sent over to New Guinea, which was a replacement depot. And uh, we were there, I think, about a month. But this was all a, a process for getting ready to invade uh, the Hawaiian Islands. And uh, we went up to the northern part of uh, uh, New Guinea and uh, gassed up the, or fueled up the <laughs> ship that we were on. 
but at the same time we merged with another flotilla of ships. And then we went from there up to uh, Bougainville, which was still an active, uh, uh, they were still fighting Japanese, but they were dispersed off to the other side of the island. So we actually, we didn't get involved in any of that. And uh, we were there about a month, I guess. And uh, they uh, kind of put us all on a ship and we started uh, uh, knowing we were going in that direction, but we didn't know we were going to the Philippines. But then ships and ships and Navy ships and and uh, scout planes giant joined and so we were quite an armada when we uh, all got together and uh, didn't, the only activity we had the closer we got to the Hawaiian Islands uh, there were Japanese planes that would fly out and our planes would shoot them right down quick. And uh, so uh, there was another uh, part of the Army and Navy had landed in Lady. But we went on up to uh, uh, the main island and landed in Lingayen Gulf. And uh, at Bay, it was, you ever been on the uh, other side of the lake from uh, near Tongue Mountain, north of Bolton? There's a big long bay that goes back in there before you get out into the island. Well, this was similar to that, only much bigger, you know, maybe 20 miles or something like that. Well, it was just full of ships. We were all up on the decks of our things that we, we had anchored. But because the uh, Navy had been in there with battleships and uh, and they'd been firing at them for, I don't know, over a week, I guess, before we got there. Well, that night out on the point of that island, which would be in the Narrows on Lake George, there was a gun emplacement up on the top of that mountain. And uh, they uh, it had disabled it, but they got it firing again, and they made one shot with that. And uh, the big battleship was not too far from us. And they took, moved the battery of those big guns, you know, the uh, 16 inches. And there was just, just one boom. <laughs> and you saw it could hit right where that emplacement was. That was it. So the next morning we were going ashore and uh, got up in the morning and there was a boat right next to us. That, uh, and the boat I was on, it was uh, like the Ticonderoga and the LCI. I'm going to go for a walk. And it used to be on the lake, the Ticonderoga used to be on the lake. And uh, it wasn't there that when we went into our bunks that night, but the next morning we went out, it was standing right on its tail like that. And that battleship wasn't anywhere else to be seen. I had moved out. But there were Japanese off the shores. They were coming out under, swimming under boxes over their heads, floating along like it was just an abandoned box. And uh, that's 
what happened to that LCI, they got right up next to it and they were just like going on now, they were loaded with charges on themselves and they set charges off and sunk the ship. But I, my bunk was right on the water's edge from down in there. It was, you know, if you could punch the hole out there, it was. Well, I, I never heard a thing that night. That's my sleep. I had a long time. So we went ashore the next morning. And, well, there was a fella sitting on the beach getting a haircut. <laughs> there really wasn't any activity at all. So we gathered our group together and we were going inland and of course the Filipinos were out with uh, uh, bananas and uh, pineapple. And uh, they had them paired and they had one of each one of us. And, and uh, the next day they wanted cigarettes if we had any. <laughs> and oh, we went inland, I guess, 10 or 12 miles and uh, uh, slept out on the open ground that night. And uh, I woke up the next morning uh, around daylight, I guess. Here was this little Filipino. He had some dice in his hand. He was rolling the dice, seven eleven, seven. <laughs> uh, so you can see it wasn't uh, very dangerous. Well, anyway, uh, uh, we went on March that next day, going south, and we were headed towards Manila. Well, anyway, uh, they came along with a bunch of trucks and they loaded us in and could, there wasn't anything, I guess, in front of us and so they drove us quite a few miles. And we were getting down close to Park Field and they had us get out and we just got out on the road and, and there was a Japanese tank up at the end of this, uh, say the end of it, where you could see the end, uh, uh, had this tank there with a uh, rifle on it. And they started firing it down and uh, there were trees on both sides of the road. And uh, we uh, had some wounded there. And uh, we got off of the road in single file and got out in the uh, uh, rice paddies on the side. And uh, then the word came out that uh, we had uh, wounded up in the, one of the rice paddies. And I was one that was, at that time, a litter bear. And uh, so when I went after uh, him, got up into the paddy quite a ways and uh, I dropped down those are you know all like big ponds only they're dry at that time of year and I dropped down behind this burn to, to see if I could find this when I located him got up in a crouch and just started for him and I got you out in the back <laughs> so that was the extent of my combat at that time and uh, uh, I got back into the aid station and they shipped me back to the uh, uh, clearing station and uh, they dressed my wounds and cleaned it, cut out the bad part and then sent me back to a field hospital. Well, I was there, I guess maybe a week and they were waiting for a, a hospital ship to come in and take a bunch of us to, uh, as I found out that later, they were going back to New Guinea. So when I heard that, I decided that I was just about healed and everything, and I wasn't wounded that bad, so 
I uh, asked if I couldn't go back to my regiment there. And so they said, okay. And so I got, by the time I caught up with them, we were just ready for the Battle of Wall City in Manila. And uh, that was, we had quite a few wounded that time. And uh, uh, um, it, it's the battle went on six, seven days. Of course, there was lots of destruction and everything, but I was lucky and didn't have any more problems. And uh, then we, uh, after that had settled down, the, uh, I was in the 145 Regiment of the uh, uh, 37th Division. And the other two regiments, they sent up to Baguio, which was northern, uh, well, it was a summer resort for the Manila uh, rich people, you know, in the summertime. And uh, there was a big bunch of Japanese up there. And uh, then they, the regiment I was with, uh, they sent us out to uh, protect the Manila water system. And it was out on Mount Packwagon. And uh, so, well, we walked, I guess, after roads ended, uh, well, maybe two, three days. We were going up this mountainside. It had two big pinks, uh, peaks on it, one here and one maybe a mile over there. Uh, we got up to where that, between those peaks, that we were going across that. Well, anyway, the Japs were up on one of this peak on this side and the one on the other, and they cut the to the regiment right in two. Well, I happened to be over on this side and some of the others were on the other. Well, they tried to get up to, you know, make contact with them over there and they couldn't, but then nighttime came. And the same thing on ours. In order to get up there on this peak, you had a, there was a path, only it was a rope ladder. And it was a, well, they started to go up there. They had a machine gun right up at the top, and of course, they shot quite a few more trying to get up there. So they decided to wait until the next day. Well, anyway, there were some wounded men out here that night, hollering for medics. And uh, so another medic and a couple of linesmen, they were riflemen. They sent us out with letters to uh, get those fellows and bring them in. And we got them and uh, brought them in. Uh, it was pretty dangerous though because they put up fires and there we were, you know, standing out there. They were like they had a spotlight on you. But anyway, we got them and got them back in all right. We were there, I think, probably four or five days, and they uh, had uh, uh, carrying parties, carrying, uh, they called them reefers, they were big uh, uh, pots like that, insulated pots, and they'd bring out hot food to us, and they had carried four or five miles the Philippine carrying parties. And uh, 
then they'd finally got some uh, big guns in there and and upset both of those emplacements up on those mountains and then we can get up on the top. But when we got up there, this was like uh, volcanic. Uh, they tumbled back into all these tunnels and that they were protected from our stuff until they got the big guns in to bust it up. And not only that, they, they, some of the fellows got up there with flamethrowers and they get to the opening and touch it off and that was it. You know, if anybody left, they were dead. So, uh, then we went uh, from there, we, uh, after we had that secured, we, we left a detachment there and then we went back in and they uh, put the, the regiment that I was with on police duty in uh, Manila. And I got in, uh, set up in a dental tech as <laughs> his uh, assistant uh, dentist. And pumping the old foot motor. You know, they didn't have any electric grills out there. And uh, uh, after that, everything was. Well, no, we went north up to uh, Apari, and then, well, we were within maybe 10, 15 miles of Apari and uh, in Luzon. That's the big island, and uh, uh, the war ended. But we were making another great big consolidation with armies and material to make uh, land and uh, Japan. So I missed that. What did you feel about like the atomic bomb? What were your feelings about that? You know, this thing that ever happened. Otherwise, you know, we'd have got slobbered up there first. We undoubtedly would have won. But that bomb, you know, just that's the end of it. No, it's, uh, oh. <laughs> okay, we're trying to <laughs> No, it's uh, millions of us were saved from that. Because, you know, in, in uh, the other uh, islands before you got up to uh, what was close to the main island there, well, I'm not sure we they fought the there for sure. day after day after day, you know, and lost thousands. Oh, dang, Brad. Uh, no, it would have, uh, without that, there would have been, you know, just thousands and thousands. <laughs> Do you remember what you were doing when you found out that the war ended? Yes, uh, we were set up in garrison, uh, as I say, maybe 20, 30 miles from the uh, area. And we were, uh, the companies, the Japanese, as we went up through, see, the one road that goes up to northern Luzon, and the Japanese that were left. They just scattered off on the sides, and uh, uh, the company, uh, the riflemen, were the ones that were going out, and you know they'd surrender some of them. Some of them uh, they fought till death, but uh, most of them then were they knew the war was going to be over with, and uh, so they surrendered a lot of them. So uh, and. Uh, Oh, 
I just can't think what I want to say. This is a parachute group. I'm trying to think of the number of them. But they landed, uh, flew in and landed in the sky uh, up in the prairie. And they had some small battles there on the way down. But uh, the, part, the big part of the Japanese on, uh, on uh, uh, Hoel Islands had been well beaten. But, as I say, myself and lots of others, that we were lucky we didn't have to go on account of the bomb. Because that's where we were headed. Was it, was it hard to get back into like society back in America? No. Uh, no, the war was over. Uh, like, these fellows now, of course, these are all volunteers. You know, there were some volunteers, but lots of us were drafted. Uh, and just got married and, and had my first son. So I wasn't anxious to get in any war. But, uh, but lots of them did. Uh, of course, they had a draft then. That started a year before the United States got in the war, and it was they were drafted for just a year, but be to be trained, and they'd been for their year, and they just gotten back in, and the United States got in the war, and they were right back in again. And the medics made a, a big difference. You know, you weren't in the, the thick of battle all the time. Uh, 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 the regiment I was in, you were always in the center of it. And the uh, rifle people and the guns and everything were on the outside. So. Is there anything that like you want students to remember about the World War II generation and like World War II? Say that again. Is there anything you want like students to know to remember about World War II and the World War II generation? You never want to get another one. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. No, that's uh, these things that are going on in Iraq and over there. There small potatoes compared to what was going on. I mean, you know, they, uh, the, the Americans and the British and uh, all the others that were part of it, uh, they were really all fighting for their life and, uh, until uh, after the Battle of the Bulge, you know, that was uh, the last big one, and uh, it wasn't too long after, excuse me, after that that they surrendered over there, and then uh, we began to get more people in the uh, Pacific from Europe, and uh, we were, you know, really giving them a rough time, and. Uh, They were moving up all the islands from uh, New Guinea, uh, some 
and they're pretty tough riders, and all those were not so bad. We lost a lot of ships and a lot of people, but they were able to move ahead. And uh, so uh, it isn't fun. Some of those that like it, <laughs> but they're the minority. But there's, you know, for every man in the front line, there's hundreds behind them. Uh, but they're all necess necessary. <laughs> You had a lot of questions there you wanted to answer. Any of them I can do? Did um did did your wife know what was going on? Were you able like talk to her? Uh, some. Uh, 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 I'm Catholic. My wife is Catholic. And. Uh, when I was up in Bougainville, uh, the priest that was there, uh, I talked to, and uh, uh, oh, I guess I talked to him two or three times. Well, he was from the Fathers of St. Edmunds, which are in Burlington, and my wife has a, has a, a brother that was a priest in the Society of St. Edmunds. In fact, he was uh, head of uh, St. Mike's at the time. Of course, St. Mike's was pretty small then compared to what it is now. And, uh, well, anyway, uh, well, after talking to him, he found out who my wife was and <laughs> who I was. So. Then, uh, and he was going back, he'd been over uh, here quite a while, and he was going back and, uh, uh, for a short stay, and when he was, uh, visited uh, my wife's family, uh, he told him that he'd see me in Bougainville. So, then she, she knew I was in the 37th Division, and then, you know, in the papers, she knew where I was and moving all the time. Because they they didn't want you to, uh, you know, right? So you they know where you were located, and then if you were captured, you know, it was for your own protection. How do you feel about how did you feel about the enemy? And how do you feel about them today? Well, I got a bad back out of them. That's <laughs> uh, I wouldn't buy a Japanese car for that reason. We're getting forced into it. <laughs> Do you recall your feelings when FDR died? He wasn't a friend of mine anyway. Oh, no. uh -huh. You know, and it, it took from 1929 up to about 48 before they started to make any progress here in this country. You know, it was a depression all that time. A lot more than what you, you see now. 
you know, there's there are 25 percent of the people that have work done. Do you remember anything else about the Great Depression? Hmm? Do you remember anything else about the Great Depression? Well, uh, see, I was born in 19, so uh, I was old enough to know. And, uh, and I can remember, uh, you know, the, uh, the Germans were making big progress in Europe, and I was still in high school. Uh, <laughs> and I can remember some students saying, uh, uh, you know, they thought the, the Germans were great, you know, they were winning so much and all that. And then uh, uh, you'd ask them, what are you going to do if they get over here and land in the United States? Well, we're just going to lick them, you know. Hell, we didn't have, for that first year, the, that was the first that they made, you know, what, our, uh, up in uh, uh, Burlington there was a National Guard uh, unit up there. This is just one example, and the other one for use was uh, down in the Catskills here. Uh, but they were, Equipped with World War One equipment, you know. Uh, it took them a year. They were training troops with that first draft. We weren't going to fight a war, and even when we started, uh, we had some, but not enough. And, uh, so it, uh, we were lucky. We lost lots of ships in the Atlantic over there. And of course, we were uh, feeding uh, ammunition, food, and everything to everybody in Europe and, and Russia too. We were going without butter, so they'd get butter over there. Lots of stuff like that. Did you ever feel like giving up or being like a medic did that kind of? No, I wouldn't give up, no. Did you have like motivation, like what motivated you to keep coming? Well. Just go because everybody else goes. I mean, you'll find a few gold, uh, gold bricks, as they used to call them, you know. Uh, no, but everybody was, you know, it was part of it. Uh, practically everybody had somebody in the service someplace, every family. Of course, others had three, four, or five. I had two brothers, and one brother and myself were in, the other one was rejected. He had a heart condition that rejected him, but he lived to 94. <laughs> but at the time, they just wouldn't take him. Was your brother in the Air Force in the Pacific? No, he was in the Air Force in, in uh, the 8th in uh, England. Yes, I so, am. He flew uh, into Germany. Uh, he was on the uh, B-17 uh, co-pilot. And uh, they were shot down in, uh, over uh, coming back after a bombing tour. Uh, I can't think of any place anymore. 
the, 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 the country is right along across from uh, England. On the France, France, Belgium, and how uh, Belgium they 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 were shot into. Uh, they were bombing factories in Germany, and uh, they got shot at there and some damage to the, with the plane, but it was still going. But then after a while it deteriorated, so they had to land in uh, uh, Belgium. And uh, there were uh, friendly people that around there that uh, got them and hit them, uh, the crew. And uh, then they finally got them transferred back to England again. But they, uh, they never were used again then. They sent him uh, and the rest of that crew, they sent him back to the States for a rest and they were going to go back and then uh, by that time uh, had ended in Europe and uh, so they didn't have to. I think they uh, discharged him and the others uh, that uh, summer of uh, 45. He was still in the service, but didn't have to go anywhere. And you got out after the war? I got out Christmas Day, 1945. Yeah. Yeah, they, you know, the war is over. We uh, landed in San Francisco. I thought I'd freeze to death. It was the cold there. Well, come to find out, I was coming down with malaria. Uh, I stopped taking that around. Probably a month before we were ready to come home. And, uh, but that was the first attack. And uh, oh, we were two or three days uh, in San Francisco, and then they loaded us right onto the train to go to. Uh, yeah. Back to where we were inducted. God, I gotta find that. And they don't come. Well, you never know what time. What do you mean, what are you supposed to do? Oh, uh, I didn't tell you. Uh, yeah. Uh, myself and. Uh, The other medic uh, got brought in stars, and then uh, the two riflemen that were acting as guards for us uh, got the silver stars over there. Tell you I was 90 years old. And the only problem is that my memory is getting real bad.
working on the wrong sheet. <laughs> Poor Devin's mad. That's where I went in. That's where I was in this chart. This morning I thought about that. What was it like when you got like when you got back here? Was it like really excited? Was your wife really excited? Your family? Well, yes, because my uh, you know I was only when I got back to Port Devens. I think we were only there made the effort to get us out by Christmas Day, and my wife drove down in a snowstorm from Springfield, Vermont, to come and get me. So I'll tell you, it was quite a uh, nice reception. Yeah. Yeah, it was, of course, uh, the day we went into uh, Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, one of the things you remember. Uh, and of course, they, they gave us uh, aptitude test while we were there, and I I wanted to get in as a mechanic in the Air Force. But the only trouble was at that time they were looking for men for the medics. group that I went in with, uh, we all went in the medics in different directions. I was going to be a dentist, but I didn't have the background for it. Is there anything else you want to tell me, Sharon? Sure. Glad it went. <laughs> Glad I got back. <laughs> This is this is more arthritis though than uh, mm -hmm. uh, see I can't uh, I stood up I can't I've got braces on both of my I can't pick my toes up off the floor and I was catching them and falling down a lot and lucky I was always falling on my stomach and not my sides or, or I'd break a hip or something. So. But uh, once I got the braces on the here to pick the toes up uh, so they don't catch everything. Do you have them off now? No, I was walking with a cane. But... Can't think of that, you know. After I leave, I think of a million things I should have told you. You told me a lot, it's really good. I just don't know if there's anything else you, if I missed any like questions or anything. Nothing on your list there yet, should this? Nothing. 
I don't know if you see one that you want to answer. You answered quite a few of them already. Uh, December 7th, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, in combat, uh, uh, you don't get a chance to think too much, you know. After you do some, but no more. Uh, now, when you see the guy shot next to you, close, you wonder why. Well, my wife and child lived with their folks while I was gone, and they were elderly, and so they were glad to have him there. And, uh, no, uh, as far as the documentaries, uh, I enjoy seeing them. Because you can always see things that are a lot worse than anything that you had, so. Of course, uh, war does some wonderful things as far as medicine goes. Look at these fellows that uh, no legs. Artificial uh, flames down and some steel, uh, uh, like uh, a short uh, bar like that, tipped up, and see those guys running dead in sidewalk. They're tough, but it just shows you that. Each war, I think, uh, they're so much better than what the doctors do. And, uh, uh, you know, you were seriously wounded in uh, uh, World War One. A big percentage of them never recover. They might get back to a hospital, but. You know, then, too, uh, those uh, that were gassed, of course, they, they survived, but they weren't uh, healthy the rest of their life. And of course, Every new war, the, the, the medical detachments are closer to the front than they ever were. Uh, my youngest son was, uh, uh, well, he joined uh, the guard. He's a, a physical therapist. Worked down in uh, Morrow was a uh, hospital down there for the mentally retarded when the, it was the hospital. Now they're over in Corinth, but it's much smaller. Uh, and he retired, and they uh, couldn't find anybody to take his place, so they rehired him as a consultant. <laughs> well, his wife wants to she uh, manages. Uh, Printing firm. And uh, she wants to uh, work a few more years. And uh, <laughs> so he's uh, just as soon as he's busy. And he's got a son you got to put through uh, college, so he's welcome to have the additional revenue.
Let's see, what else is on here? Oh, can I have that tape? You know, how do you feel about the enemy? They, uh, you know, those things are, they're wearing off now. Oh, did, did I see any of the commanders? Yeah, all of them from, from the company officers on up through to our general. Uh, and uh, of course, being in the medic, uh, uh, I never was in a hospital, but in the first aid, you know, they'd be around to see what's happening. Uh, So we got a commission. He never pulled a tooth when he went to service. The man that was head of the group of dentists was a buck sergeant. He didn't volunteer, so he didn't get a commission. But the, the doctors said that he was just a nice guy, and he said he helped me out, and I told him I'd never pulled a tooth, and uh, so he helped him out along and everything, but they got to be great friends, but uh, when we were out in the field, he had three sons in, uh, in the service, and uh, and uh, uh, he got to see them all in Manila. They were in different buildings. They'd all have to be there and he could see them, which was nice. But he was, he was a great guy. And, uh, uh, I forgot what I was going to tell you about. Oh, uh, I, I got to be what they call the T5, was one move up from the uh, private. Uh, there you go. That's a good idea. Fold it right up under it. That way you can go right across. The night the war was over with. Fold it up a little bit more. We all got into the booth. Yeah. And call it a hurricane, but a, a, a tropical shower uh, blew down all our tents. And, we were. and uh, well, anyway, the officers were up on a hill, and, and uh, so we could see them coming down, sending down the buck sergeant, looking for help. So of course, some of us disappeared. We had our own tents to take care of. Well, anyway, we went over to the kitchen, I guess, and stayed in the site for a while. And then after they got the group and they were fixing their tents up on the hill, we went back and put our own up. And, uh, well, anyway, after that, we got into the medicinal alcohol and we had a party. And So the next day, uh, they uh, um, called us all in to see the Merton Major, and I let you find it, but I'm gonna highlight it, okay? Uh, the fellas that weren't first three graders all got busted. So I came out a, a private and went in one. So, but uh, we knew we were on the way home, so. That was a, but there were a bunch of first three graders that had just come over from Europe that he, he thought he could bust them and he can't do it without a horse marshal. So they were protected.
I thought you might enjoy that. <laughs> But now the they, they used to uh, the officers would get a, a, a quote a beer uh, once a month or so. They might get five or six cases, and uh, the doctors. That we work for, they, they wouldn't drink that much, so they they give us each a case, you know. Which, uh, made us feel good, and, and, uh, but they were. Uh, uh, the doctors were real nice. Uh, Frank didn't mean anything to them. You know, they were doctors. A lot of more young and glad to get the experience. But my son, this was, he was drafted in the first uh, Korean War. In, uh, not Korean, uh, in, uh, But he, uh, he had a majority when he came out. But then he resigned right after that, so he had enough. <laughs> well, anything else? No. Is there anything else you want to add? No, can't think of anything. You're nice girls. And